Hey, Steve and Kelly with RV to Cycle. Today we're going to do a camera install, a rear observation camera. I got sick and tired of hacking the ProMaster and this is what we're installing. Or actually, we have already installed and I'd say it worked really well for us driver yes it did. okay it stayed on <laughs> all the things that came in the box there were only two things we didn't use the extended antenna base and the camera base screws before you begin the installation there are a few things you need to get done charge the camera fully turn on a fully charged camera. Plug in the monitor and power it on. Verify the camera transmits to the monitor. Turn off everything and start the installation. For our installation we use the Z bracket that's included with the packet. Following steps we'll show you how we got it on there. Using a fine point Phillips head screwdriver take the four screws out of the base that is attached to the camera. This is the base that is attached when you take the camera from the box. Oh yeah, and be careful, don't drop any of the screws, as did I. The base does fit pretty snug, so don't be surprised when it doesn't just fall off. Next, you're gonna mount the Z-bracket. The Z-bracket fits only one way. using the same four screws you just removed. And I think this is the process where I dropped one of the screws. Never did find it. Had to go to the hardware store and buy another. I recommend getting each of the four screws started prior to tightening any of them to the maximum torque value. There are no torque numbers provided in the instructions, so just get them snug, that's my advice. You might want to also use some blue Loctite. Blue Loctite is for extra holding strength. It is not considered to be permanent but boy, it sure does hold things well. I never did find that screw. Had to go to the hardware store and buy another. We put the antenna on, and now we're ready to go back to the back and check out the view to see if we've got everything aligned properly. Okay, we're going to mount this here, we hope. We're going to take out the two screws and pull it off and make sure that there's enough room for us to drill the holes and mount the mounting bracket. When you take the two screws out you can see this is what you're going to be looking at and then just gently pull back on the top part of the light and you can see there's not a lot in there. This is the backup camera which comes supplied on the vehicle and then you can see back in here is the um, middle clearance light and there's plenty of space in here where I want to drill the holes to be able to do that. So the hole we're going to drill up there is, uh, I have no idea what size is this. <laughs> this is, we're going to drill a, that's this three, three sixteenths? Anyway, we're going to drill a hole for <laughs> I'll put the information <laughs> in the video. It'll run across the screen <laughs> when we're filming this. All right. How's that look? It looks the same. I see the ladder. So that's a good thing. I okay, so that's, that's essentially, that's our dry fit. Putting it back up one more time just to make sure that it's got the right field of view for the driver. Now I'm going to go up and kind of disassemble the mounting bracket. Use use the, uh, what's that marker I'm using? 
Sharpie. Use the Sharpie to mark where we have to drill. First, I'm going to use the Sharpie to mark it. Placement to mark the placement of the mounting bracket, the front and the left and the right side. And the reason you do that is because you have to remove the mounting bracket from the, what's called the Z bracket to be able to drill the holes. I'm going to slide this off like so, and then we'll drill four holes once I reposition it up here. Now this does have a front and a back, so it's important to remember that the, this notch in the middle is actually going to be the back of the mounting bracket. The notch goes right there and that's where you'll insert your anti-theft screw. Okay, I put all four of the bolts through the holes just to make sure we had the proper fit. We put the camera back on again just to make sure we had the right depth of vision and left-right orientation for the driver who can at times be extremely picky. I'm taking the bolts back out and then before we do the final mounting of the mounting bracket, we're going to put butyl tape underneath the mounting bracket as uh, weatherproofing. All right, so now we've got butyl tape, no, which you can know. get at a variety of places. I'll have a link for this and some of these other things in the description area below the video. And what we're going to do is we're going to go down the, the length of the mounting bracket. In some cases, they also have some nice thing about butyl tape is it does fill the holes cracks and crevices, Using and yeah. we're going to extend beyond the edge just to make sure we have a good fit all the way around. And press it just a little bit to keep it snug, and now it's going to take at least two more pieces. you got to be a little bit careful when you're unrolling it because it's, it doesn't stay stuck long to the paper and if you're not careful you'll end up stretching it before you're ready for any kind of malformation to occur. To get it mounted properly what I'll do is I'll first push the bolts through these holes that way it'll be centered. Now we're going to put the bolts through pushing them carefully through I'm going to just start with two I'm going to use the opposing corners and once I've got them done then I'll put it in or I'll put it on the mounting area and then put these last two in the other hole uh, I gotta take that screw back out. Okay, one washer on, nothing yet dropped. The nut is a bit more complicated. There's not a lot of room in here for hands. All right. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna trim some of this butyl tape off. I'm gonna leave some of it extending beyond. Trim it perfectly close to the mounting bracket, but I do want to get some of the extreme excess off. You can see it gets a little bit gooey in the heat of the day. It goes on just the same way it came off. This gasket that goes around this. Uh, Housing, thank you. The gasket which goes around this housing is uh, rigid, 
so it's easy to get it back into the right slot. It doesn't take a whole lot of effort. And we put the two screws back in. You get them started by hand. And then I'll finish them off, torquing them up with the drill. For those of you who are real fanatics about proper torque, I'm sorry, I don't know the torque that these need to be. I would say tight. So next we're going to clean the area atop here. We're going to mount this solar panel using, you could use denatured alcohol, you could just use regular alcohol swabs, that's what I have. And you can see the solar panel is at an angle. The recommendation from the manufacturer, and it makes a lot of sense, when you mount this, you mount it with the back, the thickest part of the wedge to the back of your vehicle so that the wind doesn't hit it and blow it off. We're now ready to mount the backup camera. I've already cleaned the spot where we're going to affix the solar panel. It affixes with an adhesive. The adhesive is already on the panel. You just have to get the clean surface, pull the plastic or whatever it is that they use to protect the adhesive, and then press it on there. Now I'm going to put this guy on. And it is a snug fit, and that's what we want. You don't want this flying off as you're trucking down the road. All right, there we go. Now the next thing for this camera is to install a security screw, which is really more about keeping the camera on as you're traveling than it is keeping somebody from stealing it. This is the security screw, can you see that? It's actually a small bolt and it requires an Allen wrench and the Allen wrench is included with the packet of tools. And right down here is where the security screw belongs. Okay, this is where the USB connection goes if you're charging it for the first time and you're supposed to fully charge this camera before you use it. And they give you the necessary charging cord but they don't give you the outlet that you plug into your AC. The solar panel hooks up the same way. There's a USB connection here and we're going to plug it in up here into the camera and it will stay plugged in. And now we've got this plugged in. The little flap we just leave there and you can do whatever you want with this excess cord. What I'm going to do is just kind of wrap it around the bracket uh, two times before I actually mount the solar panel and what I'll do to mount the solar panel is I'll pull this off but before I pull the paper off I'm going to position it up here make sure I've got a good position then pull it off and I'll stick it and we'll stick it I'm going to hold pressure on it for about 60 seconds and then walk away and it should be fine. Usually in a couple of hours, it's fully set. All right, here's the finished product. You can see I've got the cord wrapped around a couple of times. Now, one thing I might do, actually one thing I will do to really finish this out, is I'm gonna put some die core on this base just to make sure we have no leaks. And here's the solar panel. You can see firmly affixed and the camera bracket base after the die core has been applied. Kelly's going to turn on the monitor and we'll watch her face to see if she's pleased or not. And so now we're going to mount the monitor inside the van. It uses a cigarette lighter plug. Because we have only one on the dash, I'll be using a splitter to go from the plug that's in the dash to the monitor and then the other side will be going to our RV, our Garmin RV GPS. Kelly's attempting to put the mount on. You might want to start by, let me hold that for you. Start by making sure that the little adjustment ball here is square. Oh, it's square. got a little, it's got a little. And this has a little indention in it. It's got a little track for it to That matches it. the protrusion. So you gotta get that just right. 
That doesn't move. No, you have to move that guy. There you go. And then, <laughs> and then she'll screw this knob into the threaded. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Screws that in. So you're going to get it semi-tight, not so tight we can't reposition it. Now, yeah. as you might, as you might note underneath this paper is adhesive we are not going to stick this to our dash because our longer term plan is to mount the monitor in the place of the rear view mirror there's not much wiggle room on this she is so difficult to please our interim solution for having both the monitor and garment on the dash is to use the clipboard clip that's on the dash of the ProMaster. Hey, that's it for today. Hope you got something out of this video. Appreciate you watching. We really do. And if you hadn't subscribed, we ask you please do so because it does help the channel and the more subscribers, as well as the more likes, the higher videos go in the search engine and makes it easier for others to find some of these tips and tricks and installation things. See you soon. Bye-bye.